In this lesson, we're going to add the trade screen so the player can actually buy and sell items. We'll start by adding a new trade screen window to the WPF UI project. To do that, you just go to the WPF UI, right click on it, select add, and then select window. I've already created mine and it's named trade screen .xaml. Inside the XAML file, on line six and seven, we'll set the data context, the object that's going to be used by this particular window. For this window, we're going to use the game session class. We're going to pass that game session object into it. We're going to have the window startup location to center on the owner, because this is going to kind of be a sub window of the main game. So we want it to be in the middle. And then we set the title, the font, the height and the width. We have our row definition and our column definitions here. Set up some labels. So here we can say the name of the trader. And we'll have a label that goes above a data grid that says your inventory. And we'll have another label above the trader's inventory that says trader's inventory. And then we define two data grids. This first one here is going to be the current player's inventory. We're going to show all the player's items. This is on line 38. And on line 69, we're going to have another data grid that shows the current trader's inventory items. For both of these, we set auto-generate column to false. If we don't set auto-generate columns to false, then it will include a column for each property in the inventory object. And we don't want that. We want to just have the description, the price, and then a button that says either buy or sell. So we have to define our columns for the data grid since we have the auto generate columns set to false. The first two are pretty simple. They're just data grid text columns. You put the header is going to be description. That's what's at the very top. It's read only. The width is going to be uh, for the name. It's going to be as much space as it can use. For the price, we're going to have the width equal to auto, so it's only going to use as much space as it needs. And then we're going to define the button with a data grid template column. This lets us customize the column to put whatever we want in there. In this case, we want a button. So our data template has a button. The width is going to be 55. The content, the text on the button is going to be the word cell. And when they click the button, we're going to run the on click underscore sell function. And for the data grid for the traders inventory, it's the same type of thing, except it's going to be a buy button that's going to run the on click underscore buy function. And then down in lines 100 to 104, we're going to have another button that says close and that runs the on click close button. And we'll use that to close the trader screen and go back to the main game screen. The code behind for the trade screen is the trade screen.xaml.cs. And this is pretty simple. We have a property here called, that we call session. Its data type is game session. And all this really does is it wraps the data context as a game session object. What we're going to do when we create the trade screen is we're going to say the trade screen's data context, the object that it's working with, is a game session object. It's the one from the main game. This gives us a way to treat the data context as a game session object. So that way we have all the properties and we don't have to, and we don't have to cast the data context as a game session object in multiple places. So let's take a look at our three functions. Our onclick cell is on line 19. Inside the cell function, the first thing we're going to do is figure out what row the button was on. That, and that's determined by the framework element sender data context. So this is what sent the event, the button, and the button is part of that row. So we're going to get its data context and we're going to convert it to a game item since each row should be a game item. We'll save that in this item variable and we'll say if the item is not null, so if we were able to convert whatever raised this event into a game item, 
then we're going to run the rest of the code. And in this case, since we're selling something from the player's inventory, we're going to add the item's price to the player's gold. We're going to add that item to the trader's inventory, and we're going to remove that item from the player's inventory. The function for the buy on line 31 is pretty much the same type of thing. We get the item that they wanted to buy on line 33, make sure it's not null, so that we could actually get a good game item value. Then we have an extra check here in line 37. We check to see if the player's gold is greater than or equal to the item's price. So if the player has five gold, but the item price is four, then the player has enough gold, so we let them buy it. If the player has five gold and the item's price is 10, the player does not have enough gold, so we have to raise this message down here on line 45 and say, you do not have enough gold. But when the player does have enough gold, we'll run these three lines, 39 through 41, and we're going to subtract the item's price from the player's gold. We're going to remove the item from the trader's inventory, and then we're going to add the item to the player's inventory. And then down the line 50 through 53, we have our on-click close. So when the player clicks the close button on this window, then we're just going to run close. And that's all the logic we need to actually handle the trade because the remove item from inventory and the add item to inventory functions, those all handle adding things and removing things from inventories. And the gold property has an event handler so that when the property value changes, it's going to raise an event, automatically notify the UI, and the UI will update. So we don't have to add any other logic in here to refresh the UI. This should all be automatically handled. To finish this off, we need to go back to the main window and actually have the trade button open up the trade screen window. So we go into mainwindow.xaml, and our trade button was on line 264, we're going to add a click event handler. So now when the player clicks this button, we're going to run on click underscore display trade screen. And then we go into main window.xaml.cs and we have that new function here on line 55. We'll start out by instantiating a new trade screen window. We're going to set the trade screen's owner to this, the main window, because one of the things we want to do is center the trade screen on this whole game screen. We're going to set the trade screen's data context, the object it's going to be working with, to underscore game session, which is the game session we have on line 13, that variable, that's holding the whole game session. Because game session is one of our classes, one that we defined, this, any objects that are game session objects are going to get passed as a reference. What happens when we instantiate this game session object, it gets put somewhere in the computer's memory. And when we say the trade screen data context equals that game session variable, the game session object, we don't actually pass the object in, we pass in a reference to the object. So when the trade screen looks at its data context, it's actually looking at this underscore game session variable. It only exists in one place. Every other place that we use it, it's pointing to that same one place in memory. So any changes we make to the game session object and trade screen are actually happening to the one game session object that exist for the main window also. And then the last line we have in this function is the trade screen show dialog. There's another option you can do show. Show displays the window, but it does it in a non-modal fashion. So if you do show, then the user could still click on buttons on the main window screen. If we do show dialog, then that means trade screen is modal. It's kind of locked everything else out in the user interface. So we can't go and click on the main window, which is good because we don't want the player to open up a trade screen and then start moving around to different locations until they've actually closed the trade screen. 
if we allowed that, it might be a little confusing to the player. So now we have this all in place. Let's run the game and see uh, if everything actually works. I'll start by moving north, and I'm at the Herbalist Hut, which has a trader, and the trade button's displayed. We'll click the trade button. Now we have the new trade screen window, and I can't click on any of, uh, any of the buttons on main window because trade screen was open as a modal window. And if we look, the player currently has a million gold and one pony stick in their inventory. If I buy the pony stick from the trader, we see that the trader's inventory is empty now. The player's inventory shows both pony sticks. And then on the main window, it shows both pointy sticks and the gold is updated to 999,999. So we took away one gold. If we sell the stick, we see the inventories have updated and the gold is updated. We'll sell the other stick and now the player's inventory is empty and they have a million and one gold. That's all automatically handled because all of our properties have property changed event handlers and the UI is listening for it everywhere and it automatically updates. That's it for this lesson. If you have any questions, I'll have a link to the support page in the description. Just leave your question there and I'll get back to you as soon as possible.